Holy Spirit, speak to us. Impact our lives this morning. Father, we ask that every chain, every veil that have covered the mind and soul of anyone in this place this morning, let that chain be broken in Jesus' name. Open the eyes of your people, enlighten our hearts, O Lord God, and grant each and every one of us understanding of your word. Grant us the grace to go forth to do your word in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. So if you look at the program, you will see where we are at. Morning message, Christian restitution for your peace and heaven. Christian restitution for your peace and heaven. We are drawing inspiration from this book. And the ushers are supposed to have it and uh, take it around for those who would want to get a copy. This book, you must have a copy. You must have a copy. The Doctrine of Restitution for Your Holiness and Heaven. The Doctrine of Restitution for Your Holiness and Heaven. And we have the book. I believe the ushers should have it around now. Okay. Praise the Lord. Amen. So let's move on. Restitution. What is it? When we were on the other side, this word restitution was hardly mentioned. Teachings on restitution, I personally, I never had. I only had when I arrived here in Holiness Rubber Movement. Praise the Lord. I don't know about you, maybe it's the same thing. So when I came and I had the word, I was wondering, is it like a new thing? Is it in the Bible? How come that if it is this serious, how is it that they don't teach it? They don't enforce it. They don't bring it up anywhere. In fact, if you bring it up, the kind of response that you will receive, you will be surprised. You will be surprised. But brethren, even the word restitution is expressly mentioned in the scripture. Many places. I searched for it. Praise the Lord. But I came to find out that it was the enemy. It is Satan who had made sure that it is not being preached. It is Satan who had made sure that we don't teach it. We don't practice it outside of here. But thank God for holiness and rubber movement. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. This is a place that the Lord himself has set up to cleanse his people, to show them the way, to bring them into the highway of holiness, to make sure, remember this place is the place of revision. Everything that you have not heard of, those things that you have not been taught about, those things that you are not sure of, those questions that you have in your heart, this is the place where God brings peace to your heart. Amen. And breaks them down bit by bit so that you will understand it. Even nature itself teaches restitution. You do it, but how come that is not being um, preached as much as it should? That's why I'm emphasizing it. It should be in your lips. It should be everywhere you go. It should be in your lifestyle. Every day you should be considering it. What do I have to do? Praise the Lord. As I said, even nature, you hear people come to you and say, oh, I am sorry for what I have done. You know what I said the other day? It was not as it as it is. Maybe it's exaggeration. Maybe whatever has happened. You know the lips? He can gather words from nowhere and bring it out by himself. If you have no control of your lips, you could say some things. You go back and tell the people, I'm sorry for what I have done, for what I have said, for what we have discussed, for what I have received, for what I have given, whatever it is. It is normal thing. 
Husband will say to the wife, I'm sorry. Wife say to the husband, I am sorry. Children come to their parents. Parents go to the children. Colleagues at work. Everywhere you are, you will hear these things. So naturally, there is restitution. What I said yesterday, did it hurt you? I'm sorry. That's restitution. Praise the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. Even in the organized society, it's there. The police and many agencies in government. Here we have ICPC, we have uh, the EFCC, we have the courts, we have so many other uh, agencies in the government that um, participate in this process of restitution. Somebody steals, they catch him, then they take the person to court, the police who can deal with it, the courts can deal with it, the agencies, some people go to government to work. Most people in this go and enrich yourself. For those who have done it, remember, you must go back and settle scores. So, restitution is there everywhere. But that restitution in the world, in the system, might not be the full restitution. Actually, in the Bible, in Exodus 22, it used the word full restitution. Praise the Lord. So, Christian restitution is what we are dealing with today. Christian restitution for your peace and heaven. And that goes beyond just what I have said. Because in the government, you might embezzle the money. You know, in the news, here, even in Nigeria, I don't know if you remember, a batch of loot. The family gather themselves together with the people who brought them and say, okay, let's negotiate. Out of the billions and billions and billions that have been stolen, we will give you people a few billions. All that you have stolen, you must return them penny by penny. Praise the Lord. Be thou therefore perfect, even as your heavenly Father, which is in heaven, is also what? Perfect. That is Christian restitution. Some people, they might steal and then hide some and declare, okay, now that I have been caught, I will return some. And they return some. So the court will give them leniency and all that. And then they go to jail for some time and they come out, clean up themselves. We know so many of them. You know them. You know them that have gone to jail and all that. Even governors, you know them, even in, here in Nigeria. Then they come back again and still go back to where they hid all this money and continue to enjoy themselves. That's not Christian restitution. For Christian restitution, you go back and everything that you have taken, you return it for the people. So, this, uh, the book is big, it's large. So, it's about 180. encourage you to make sure that you have it in your house. Have it with you. Have it with you. Praise Master Jesus. So what is restitution? We will look at that. We will look at the reasons for restitution. We will look at how serious is restitution. We will look at the areas of restitution. We will look at how to restitute the process of restitution. And then some things that you will need to understand about restitution. We will look at all that as well. But for the definition of restitution, it's very large. I have touched here and there. I want us to go to the scriptures and look at a few things that has been brought out. First of all, let's go to Exodus chapter 20, 22. Exodus 22. I'll just read 1 to 5 quickly. Please, if you have your Bible, make sure that you open it so that we will flow together. Praise Master Jesus. Exodus 22, 1 to 5. And I will also read uh, Leviticus chapter 6, maybe 4 and 5, just to bring out what restitution is all about. It says in Exodus 22, If a man he shall restore five oxen for an ox, and four sheep for a sheep. If a thief be found breaking up, and be smitten that he die. There shall no blood be shed for him. If the sun be risen upon him, there shall be 
There shall be blood shed for him, for he should make full restitution. Everybody say full restitution. Say it again. Don't do half, half, half restitution. A lot of people do that. God demands what? Full restitution. If you have nothing then, he shall be sold. For what? That's how serious restitution is. If the theft be certainly found in his hand alive, whether it be ox or ox or sheep, he shall restore double. If a man shall cause a field of vineyard to be, to be eaten and shall put in his beast and shall feed in another man's field of the best of his own field and of the best of his own vineyard, shall he make what? Restitution. I was surprised to see this word restitution like this as I was reading this thing. If it's like this everywhere in the scripture, how come it is not like that in our preachings? Let's go to Leviticus. For so I will read just four and five. What is restitution? Chapter Chapter 6, verse 4, it says, Then it shall be because he had sinned. If you have restitution to do that you have not done, it is because you have done what? You have sinned. Who want to go to heaven, they will do something about it. That he shall restore that which he took violently, violently away. Or the thing which he had deceitfully gotten. Things taken violently. There might be also things that are not violently taken, but taken without permission. Things which has deceitfully gotten. You deceive the people. You think you are smart. 419. All those things. Imagine if you have entered into fraud business. Imagine the length of restitution that you have to do. And you have to do it. It's not the path to tread. Those who are convincing you, those who are telling you stories, uh, whatever stories that they are telling you, it is a complete sin. You are guilty. And you must render full restitution for those things that you have done. So beware. And five. Oh, all that about which he had sworn falsely. Okay, so I jumped one. Or that which was delivered him to keep. <laughs> they gave you to keep. You mismanaged it. Mishandled it. Put it to your own personal use without permission. Or the lost thing which you have found. It's wisdom not to take anything. It's better you just walk and go because as soon as you find it and pick it, then the responsibility lies on you to make sure you find the owner. Otherwise, that which was lost and you find it and you keep it, you are in trouble. Or all, oh, that's verse 5 now, or oh, all, that ab all that about which he had sworn falsely, you use sweet mouth, and speak anyhow, swear falsely, and get it. Because some people, they can easily, especially here in the north, I grew up here in the north, and people will just use the name of God and say something. It's a serious matter. Very serious matter. Be careful. Or that which he had sworn falsely, he shall even restore it in the principle, and shall add the fifth part more thereto, and give it unto him to whom it appertained in the day of his trespass offering. Praise Master Jesus. As we are going on, please make sure that you are in the spirit of meditation. You are checking up. You are checking up. We are reading from the scriptures. This is what the Bible says. Okay, so the restitution, the Christian restitution, this one, there are some additions 
because it is part of Moses' law. All that fifth part, fourth part, and all that. But at this time, you need to restore that which you have taken. And if the person demands more for whatever reading, maybe because the value has changed or whatever, then you have to negotiate with that individual. Praise the Lord. You talk with them and agree. And do what? Agree. Remember, Christian restitution for your peace and heaven. Let's go on to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Very popular verse here in Holiness Revival Movement. If you know it, you can begin to quote it to everybody. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Do you know it? Please, let's say it loudly. Follow peace with how many people? Everybody, young and old, husband and wife, children, elderly, colleague, people you meet on the road, you know them, you don't know them, your neighbor or not, with everybody. Make sure there is peace between you and them. That is holiness. And without it, <laughs> you can't see God. Amen. I'm giving you time to think. Who is this person that peace has not been established between you? Who is that person? That peace has not been established. That you have not made effort as much as it is possible in your life to bring peace. Yes, that person that you have just remembered, you must go and follow peace with that person. Whatever the situation may be, wherever the person may be, thank God for telephone. Thank God for holiness revival movement in many countries. That's a connection for you that can help you to get your restitution fully done. Praise Master Jesus. So what is restitution? As we have read, you have seen it is to restore lost or stolen property, restore the items that are with you to the rightful owners. For those who have come to steal, ah, my brother, this place is not the place to take anything. Whatever it is, please bring it back. Return it to the person. Otherwise, the door of heaven is closed against you. And imagine some people... Very little things. Very little thing. Is that enough to take you to hell? Why not get peace today? Why not get the door of heaven opened to you today? Think about it. Don't take it carelessly. Recompense for injury or hurt that has been caused by you. You have hurt someone. Some people, they are so... Sometimes I don't understand. You talk anyhow. You do things anyhow. You hurt people and you just move on. Ha, my brother. That hurt that you have just injured, it belongs to Jesus Go and get it sorted out. Amend your ways. Both new and old. Many people, they say, you know, in those places where they, they deceive the people. Oh, if any man be in Christ, all things are new. Forget about everything in the past. Ha, is that what the Bible says? Is that what the Bible says? 
My brother, if you are born again, that is the beginning of righteousness. And that is the beginning of the life of a child of God. Then the life starts. The life does what? Starts. Let's go to Ecclesiastics. Maybe that will help you to deal with this part of all things have passed away. Praise the Lord. Let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Amen. If you are there, you say amen. amen. Chapter 3, we are reading verse 15. And we are going to read it together. Again, if you are there, say amen. amen. All right, let's go. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 15. One to go. That which have been is what? Now. And that which is to be had already been. And... God. God. The same God that in his word, he says, all things have passed away. Remember how the Bible works. A little from the left, a little from the right, double-breasted, witness of two or three, then judgment is established. Same God have put it expressly. God required that which is in the past. Now you have come to the new life. And the question is that daddy used to ask. You now that you are saying all oh, things have passed away. When you were a sinner and now that you are born again. Has your face changed? Has your name changed? Has your color changed? You are still the same person. The item you stole in the past. Is that item still a stolen item? It is. I think I had a story here last year or this year. I don't remember. Of a brother that used to be a, a thief. Went and stole somebody's Okada motorbike. And he's enjoying himself with the mobile, uh, Okada. And after a while, he now became born again. And he's still enjoying the Okada. Imagine. <laughs> Stolen property, you are driving. In fact, the worst part is that this brother is using the Okada to go and preach. Hi. God set him up. Everybody say God set him up. One day, whether it's by mistake or the way God wanted it, he went back to that village where he stole the motorbike. You know now he has changed the number, he has changed the color, he has changed everything. But he's still a stolen word motorbike. This brother, <laughs> he went to preach, finished preaching, now he's going. And then he met an old man on the road. And he looked at the man. Now he's, he's a new creature. He has nice mind. He's a beautiful brother. He, he can help. He can give money. He can do many things. And uh, he looked at the man and said, oh, he went back and said, ah, where are you going, Baba? Baba said, I'm going there. Oh, that's where I'm going. Sit down. Let me carry you. As they were going, the Baba said, ah, my son. I used to have a nice bike like this one. Kai, God opened his eyes. Praise the Lord. This is the Baba that I stole the bike from him. What do you think he should do? All things have passed away. Now I am born again. Let me enjoy my Okada. Uh -huh. What should he do? Lie down flat on the grass. Lie down anywhere you see and say, so, um, it was me who stole your bike. And plead. Otherwise, when you finish that your evangelism, when you finish that your prayer warrior, when you finish raising the dead, you will arrive. And when you arrive, you will hear. Depart from me. I never knew you. You are riding stolen property and you are enjoying yourself. Jesus don't know you. So consider it. Your own might not be bike. It might not be as big as bike. It might be just little thing. Little thing. But is there any sin that is little? Is there a black and white sin? Sin is what? Let's go and get it settled. Praise Master Jesus. 
Again, restitution is also restoring things to their original state. <laughs> restoring things to what? Original state. Remember, as much as it is what? Possible. All these people that go and do tattoos on their body, these people that go and change their nail, these people that go and change their behind, change their front, change their eyes, means what? Restoring things to what? Original state. Now that you have gone to cut your teeth, that is going to be a problem. Now that you have given yourself a permanent tattoo, you will remember it until you go. I used to see people over there in Europe. I said, Kai, <laughs> how can you forget this thing now? Every time you go to the mirror, you will see it. That's why it's good to join God, to remember God in the days of your youth. Young people, be careful. Because of restitution, it is that serious. Praise the Lord. All these things I'm saying, most of them are all in the book. Remember, I'm just doing a summary because the book is 180 pages. And we don't have 180 minutes for this. Amen. And all the Bible scriptures are there in detail. None of them was cut short. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So go and restore peace. In everything, state of no trouble. <laughs> Praise the Lord. A state where there is no issue, no offense between you and anyone. And remember, peace and holiness, without which no eye shall see the Lord. Rest Christian restitution for your peace and holiness. Restitution is also bringing yourself, your conscience, to a place uh, um, of no guilt. Amen. Conscience void of offense. Conscience overflowing with peace. Those things that are disturbing you, check them out. Don't just leave them. Don't just leave them. Don't just, you have an, an argument. The Bible says, agree with your adversary. Now, 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 when there is opportunity, while you are still on the way, before it gets to become something serious, settle it now. It's even better to do that now. Because later on, the leaders will come in, the pastors will come in, the brethren will come in, and then the church will come. Why not settle it now? Now. Today and now is the day of salvation. Praise the Lord. Let's go to Luke chapter 19. For those who are born again, now you have received Christ. Look at what this government man did. This man that is walking. You that you are a policeman, be careful. You, you want to enter customs. You want to enter immigration. You want to enter anywhere where there can be collection of money. Be careful. You that you are an accountant, be careful. You are working in the office. You are the one that carries the file. Be careful. Born again. Will have comma. You're born again. Will raise questions against the gospel. Uh, let me read from verse 8. A certain man, his name is Zacchaeus. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my good I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him, how many? Four foods. Remember, you don't have to do that now. Now we are saying, you, you may not have to do that. Now we are saying restore. That's what the Lord is demanding from you. If the man is asking more, negotiate and come to peace. 
then Jesus is talking to the Lord Jesus. Now you are born again. Now even Jesus is relating with you. Now you have to take the gospel of God to the nations, to the cities, to the communities around you, to your workplace. Now you have to evangelize. Now you are a witness to the true gospel. But look at what is hanging around you. The bribes you have collected. The people you have deceived. The stories that you have fabricated. People can fabricate stories here. Are you saying you are born again? Look at what Zacchaeus and Jesus said to him. This day is salvation come to this house. For so much as he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. He was lost. He came to realize it when the murmuring started. Zacchaeus, this man, this man, you cannot pass their office without paying money. I heard of somebody in a big place in this country, a relation of mine, that before you go and see her, is five million. Uh -uh. Five million? No wonder you are so proud. No wonder you are buying and building things everywhere. That's where the money is coming. Ah, my dear, this money, you have to return them all. You have to return them. Your own might be five, five naira. It might be 500 naira. I don't know which place where you are working. Maybe even in the hospital. You are taking things that are not yours. Because the people need a service from you. Even when government... I think it was when we were coming or so behind them. I saw it for, well, we were in Imo State. I, I, I said, did you see that? He said, ah, it has been there long. And they are collecting the money in the open like this. Kai, Zacchaeus, salvation has not come to you yet. If you are one of those, please, when you get there, make it very clear to the people that all this money collected must be returned in full. Imagine that. Otherwise, salvation has not come. Otherwise, the benefit of the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ has not been received or cleared in your life. In your house. Praise the Lord. How serious is this restitution? We have read Leviticus 6 before. All that you have to do. Look at Job. And the friends of Job. In Job 42. 7 and 8. I will not read it. You may know the story. If not, please. It's in the book. It, it took a couple of pages here in the book to explain it. Some people, because Job, God is handling Job. Some people came and speak anyhow. Spoke anyhow against Job, against what is happening, against the man of God. And God himself ordered them to go and do restitution. That's how serious it is. That's how serious God takes it. Go and clear yourself. In fact, go back to Job and he will pray for you before salvation shall be cleared with you. I see on the internet even someone as bright, as holy, as clear, and humble as our international director. There are people, it's their job to speak against the Lord's anointed. My brother, I don't understand it. And they are speaking lies. One brother here went to the chosen and tell lies. Huh. 
And it was even the church that is, because here we want every soul to be saved. Just like God. It is not in God's mind that anybody should perish, no matter who the person is. If they can just consider in their heart and make a change. Our international director was even begging him, come and clear yourself. And he was promising, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, and today he's dead. He's dead. He's dead and gone. Do you know the day of your death? Do you? Did he know when he was there, the little money they were giving him, how much? How many people have gone there and testified against Holiness Revival Movement? Two of them. Where are the two of them? Dead. And people are still attempting to do it. Still doing it. It is very serious. It's your life that you are putting at stake. How much can they pay you? What is the cost of your soul? What can you give in exchange for the soul that God has given to you? How much? In fact, some of you will like it. Some of you, you will share it. Wow. <laughs> Internet is a dangerous place, I'm telling you. It's 8 billion people inside there. And you release one unconfirmed message. Any message that is not confirmed is called gossip. And gossip is sin. And no sinner of that sort will enter the kingdom of God. You don't know the story. You just send it out. And those people who are sending you story, you are reading. You are reading. You are reading. Remember your faith is by hearing. So also is your contact with Satan. Because evil communication will surely do what? Corrupt the mind. So don't stop sharing what you don't know. Those things are lies. Big lies. And people spend for lies. I can tell you, people who spend to promote lies. People paid flight ticket from Nigeria to come to my house in London to spread lies inside my house. To tell me. People pay for it. Oh, because one big man, this one, that one. No, 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 no. Be careful. If you don't know, you don't know. Clear yourself. I don't want to hear. I'm not interested. Concerned brethren, please, your way is somewhere else. We are on the highway of holiness. We are running by speed in a clear way with the Lord Jesus Christ, with the angels of the Lord guiding us as we are moving. We don't want any corruption. We are heading to heaven. We want peace in our mind wherever we find our place. Please keep yourself away from such people. This is dangerous. In fact, it is this serious. That in Mark 18, oh no, Matthew 18, sorry, I said Mark. Matthew, sorry, Matthew. Popular story. Matthew 18. I will read just a few to, for time's sake. Let me read from 23. Let me read from 23. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king which would take account of his servant. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him which owed him 10,000 talents. Remember, there will be a day of reckoning. There will always be a day of reckoning. Always. For, but for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be what? That's how serious. And his wife and his children and all that he had and payment to be made. You have stolen, you have taken, you have deceived, you have done all kinds of things and you have gotten them. And you say, oh, I will pay later, I will do this, I will do that, I will do that. Check, check. Is there anything for you to sell? You can sell your shoe. Eh, you have phone. <laughs> Let's sell it. Praise the Lord. Sell your phone. Sell your car. Whatever that is sellable, do what? Sell it. 
Don't sell your soul. That's how serious it is. If the master will demand this, why will you take it lightly? So that's how serious it is. Don't take it lightly. Why do we do restitution? Quickly. God commands it. You can see in the case of Job, it's God that commanded that it should be done. In many other cases, a few of them that we will look at as we go ahead, as quick, as much as the uh, time will permit us, you will see God commanded it. It is for personal cleansing. It, uh, for ministers, it's to bring you to an honorable use. You know the story. So in 2 Timothy chapter 2, 1921, write it down. Buy the book. It's actually in the book. Amen. Personal cleansing. 2 Corinthians 7, 1. Let us therefore, now that you say you are born again, you want to move into the highway of holiness, go now and cleanse yourself from all filthiness of the word flesh and then of the spirit. Clean them out. Cleanse them out. Restitution is also returning things back to their original state. It is for holy, holiness and um, blameless life. It edifies the church. It adorns the gospel of Christ. That is what Zacchaeus did. And it's also a form of evangelism. Because when you go to the people to do it, which gospel can be stronger and better than that? Go and do it. Some people might say, oh, but it's my brother that I stole his money. Oh, maybe it's my mother. Maybe it's your... <laughs> Go also and do it. Go to the book of Judges, chapter 17, 1 to 4. Or just read the complete thing. You will see a man there. His name is Micah. <laughs> this man, he took his mother's money. Some people think it's their right. I've met someone that says, is it not my father's money? Eh? Is, is it your money? Micah went and took his mother's money. Some reasonable money like that. Hundred shekels in their currency. <laughs> Thank God for the mother. The mother did not keep quiet. There is some people they are very dangerous in releasing curses. When the mother started releasing dangerous curses, <laughs> not only to Micah, your Micah and your generation, everybody that comes from Micah, this one, that, oh my God, Micah said, I say, mommy, it's me, I took that money. That money that you are cursing, I took it, I took it, I took it, please forgive me. However, that he presented the matter, and the mother said, ah, did you know that money, I was gathering it for the Lord? Do you know that that thing that you have, it was, this, it was being kept for God? And thank God, the matter was settled. So is it your moms? Please, go back to them and settle it. And the Lord will bless you abundantly in Jesus' name. Areas of restitution. Restitution in marriages, lying, slander, stealing, murder, theft, ministerial falsehood, deception, fraud, spiritism, occultism, all those things that ministers do in the place. We will look at the scriptures. And witchcraft also, sorcery, like the man in the Bible, Simon the sorcerer. And everybody knows him as a big man of God. Ha! And he's deceiving the people. Deceiving the people. I was told a story of a man that uh, a minister, so to say, in quote, he's not a minister of God, he's a minister of Satan and demons. He went to go and collect power for his ministry, and they gave him they converted his wedding ring or they gave him a wedding ring and that wedding ring, the power is only when he's talking to you, he will hold it like this and he can see you in spirit. 
He sees everything concerning you, your name, your bank account, your mother, your in-law, the situation you have been, everything about you. He can see it. But his problem is that they did not give him power to act on the thing that he sees. And then he started looking for, he went everywhere until he arrived in Nigeria, looking for power to, do, to prophesy and then do miracles. All those ones, it's a huge thing. If you have done it in public, like in the internet, you have to go back there and to go and correct things. Correcting past wrongs, that's also restitution. Ha, minister. Terrible thing. Let's check out the restitution for marriage. We also have the smaller version of this book. It is called restitution in the marriage restitution in the old and the new testament so that one was specific on all the issues about marriage let's go to genesis chapter 20 let's look at how god and abimelech dealt with the matter of marriage restitution genesis 20 amen are you there if you are there say amen if you are sleepy, say amen. Ah, there's people there. <laughs> Please, you're not allowed to be sleepy. This is a serious matter. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Genesis 20. Let me read from verse 7. Let's start from there. You know the story. Abraham, Sarah, and King Abimelech. Verse 7. Now, therefore, restore the man his wife, for he is a... Die! You are a dead man. I've heard all kinds of stories about uh, marriage restitution. I, I'm, haven't you read? As soon as you get inside that place, the Bible said you are what? A dead man. You are gone. You are gone. As, as soon as another man's wife or you, you have married, comes to you and you accept, however you call it, you are dead already. Dead on the spot. And this woman or man must be restored back. Why? <laughs> the agenda of God is on every person, both the man and the woman. And those that God have brought together in the union of marriage. Are you the one to scatter the plans of God? Because you have found somebody you want to get married to? Or somebody that you say that you are infatuated or you call it love? Is that your wife? Have you forgotten that they twin shall be what? One. And whatsoever that the Lord has joined together, let no man do what? Put us under. Is it you? that want to challenge God to put asunder, you, mere man, be careful. Don't let anyone deceive you. Dead on the spot. So therefore, go and return the woman back to the husband. Husband back to the wife. Or you have reasons. You have reasons. So let me read the reasons that Abimelech gave. Let's compare with your own reason. Verse 3. But God came to Abimelech in the dream by night and said to him, Behold, thou art but a dead man for the woman which thou hast taken, for she is a man's wife. But Abimelech had not come near her, and he said, Lord, will thou slay also a righteous nation? Will you have that confidence to question God? Are you a righteous man? Will you claim that? Hmm. Ah. Said he unto me, she is my sister. He's explaining. And she herself said, he is my brother. In the integrity of my heart and innocence. Oh, this man, I think he's a lawyer. He's a king and a lawyer. He's bringing out big, big, big words for the master. Sir, you have another man's wife. Forget English. Praise the Lord. 
because you're a dead man. This your grammar is not helping anything. I am a bishop. We know of a bishop here in our midst that after all said and done, he returned the wife to where it belongs to. I think he was born in 20 years. I don't remember how long. You know the story. In fact, the bishop is here. And you are telling stories. Innocency of your heart. God answered him. This is why you want to get married. Be patient. <laughs> Follow the marriage committee. We have lost some people because of this. We are saying, my brother, calm down. Say, oh, I love him. Oh, I have been uh, single for all this year. All these years you have been single. Are you tortoise? Now that we want to bring you out, that's when you want to run out by yourself. We have lost two or three brethren clearly in Europe because of that. Calm down. Let's settle this matter. You, you will go back to God and say, I'm innocent, integrity of my heart, righteousness from wherever, wherever. Calm down and Ghana and check. Did you call someone in the Caribbean to find out if the story is the same? Abimelech, did you do it? Oh, yeah, I only ask the people that is around here. Eh? Do you know where these people are coming from? Have you gone to where they are coming from? Calm down, brother. Let's confirm all this story that you have been told. Calm down. Oh, you know, that man that I was with before, it is like that. It's because we are not has done his restitution. My brother, that is not how marriage committee deal with it. You will calm down and every layer of the story will be exposed and checked and confirmed because we understand the value of your soul. We do. We do. We do. Because as soon as you go and say, I do, God says, you are bet. What? A dead man. is gone. So check it up. And do the right thing. May the Lord grant you the grace in Jesus' name. Many things to say, all in the book. You will say, okay, but you know, the man, we were not born again. Okay, maybe she committed adultery. Go and read it. And read it carefully. Go and read it. And read it carefully. Let me give you Bible verses and quotations. They are also in the book. It will clear it all for you. Romans chapter 7, verse 2 from verse 2, read it. Luke chapter 16, from verse 18, read it. Malachi chapter 2, from verse 14, please read it. We have just read Genesis 20. Read the complete story from verse 1 down to 18. Praise Master Jesus. Should we read one? Let's go to Romans chapter 7, just as the Bible says, two or three witnesses, a matter is what? Sorted. Romans chapter 7. Let me read briefly. Just two. For the woman which had an husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loose from the law of her husband. So then, if while her husband liveth, she be married to another, she is what? Dead. Just like Abimelech. Fortress. But if her husband be dead, then she is free. So that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. Only condition is that one is dead, physically dead, not spiritual dead. And you say, oh, but, you know, Moses said you can give a bill of divorcement because of this, because of this, because of that. Read the Bible very well. It uses the word fornication not adultery. The adulterous woman that was even caught in the very act of adultery, the Lord Jesus Christ says, we don't find any guilt. As long as you have come to confess and you are ready to move on in righteousness and holiness, there is nothing there. We don't find no sin against you. I, myself, the Lord Jesus said, I do not condemn you. Go ahead and live your life in peace. Christian restitution for your peace and what? Heaven. That's what we are talking about. And that fornication, this 
explanation could be just like uh, Joseph when he was getting married to um, uh, Mary. If you are under all those processes and it has not been confirmed and it is not found out that one of them is involved in immorality, sexual immorality, it says then you have the right and authority to stop the marriage. That's the divorcement he's talking about. But as soon as you say I do, the Bible says you are now one. Nobody, no human being, no authority, no court, no body, no judgment can be able to separate you. That one that you have married, the first and the original, restoring back to the original state, that's the one that you should go back. It doesn't matter how many children that has been had in anywhere. The day that you receive Jesus Christ, the day that you decide that I want to go to heaven, I want to have peace with all men and with God, that's the day you go back and do it. You have had right here in this church, a man came and gave the testimony and he, saw, he brought the wife also. They were married before. I think they had two children and then the man went, the woman went, when the woman went and married somebody that was richer and better and in everything. Comfortable house, comfortable apartment, nice cars, nice buildings. And then Jesus arrived to the man. Praise the Lord. The man received Jesus and said, hey, my wife has had three children on that place. I have two, gen two children in this place. How is this going to happen? It is not possible. My brethren, the process is, by the time you realize that what you have done is wrong, you are guilty. You have done that which is wrong. Sit down. Consult with God. Speak with God. Pray to God and say, Lord, look at what I have had. How do I do it? Help me, Lord. Then go and seek counsel. Go to the leaders. Here in Holiness Revival Movement, it is very clear. Our daddy has made it very clear to all the leaders. We understand. As much, even if we don't, we go back to him. God will tell him exactly what you need to be done. And then you can do it and be free from this bondage of death that Satan has put on your head. That's what God wants to break in your life. Praise Master Jesus. Go and clear it up. Seek counsel. Multitude of counsel, you will not have problems. Don't jump. Don't jump. Simple things, that's fine. But any matter becomes somehow above simple. Go and let the people of God handle it with prayers. God is powerful enough to make way for you to fix it. Amen. Let's look at the ministers. Amen. Praise Master Jesus. Let's look at the ministers. Let's go to Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. And uh, we'll read a few verses. Amen. <clears throat> Follow me to Galatians chapter 3. Please look at your Bibles, open it, and let's read. I'm reading from verse 1. I'll go very quickly. O foolish Galatians, who had bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ had been evidently set forth, crucified among you, this only would I learn of you, received ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Are you so foolish, having begun in the spirit and you are now made perfect by the flesh? Have you suffered so many things in vain? Is it, if it be yet in vain, he therefore that ministered to you the spirit and worketh miracles among you, do it he by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith, even as Abraham believed God and he was counted unto him for righteousness. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. So then, they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. For as much are of the works of the law are under the cause, for it is written, Cause is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident for that just shall live by what? Faith. Now you, you are the minister. You are the minister. What have you done? You have now carried the faith of the people of God. The faith by which they are able to please God. 
You have, you have brought them to holy water. You have brought them to anointing bottle. You have brought them to sand from wherever. You have brought them to all kinds of things. I've been in a ministry where the preacher goes and remove his cloth and put it on the table in front there and ask anybody that wants to receive and, and pray and people were queuing up. I did not know holiness that time, but the spirit of the Lord told me this thing has taken the people away from faith. I was the only one. Though I was the protocol to the minister, I was my wife was there. In fact, my wife went <laughs> in those days. <laughs> oh my God. Minister, is that what you are doing? God will demand the soul of these people from you. Your preaching, your work should not bring any offense. <clears throat> Second Corinthians. Chapter 6. Uh, let me read verse. Minister, giving no offense in anything that the ministry that God has placed in your hand be not what? Blamed. But in all things, approving ourselves as the ministers of God in which in much patience in affliction, in necessities, in distresses, in stripes, in imprisonment, in the mouth, in labor, in watching, in fasting, by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the many things we come to you. Don't let, allow those things to be the reason why you go and do otherwise. The grace of God is available for you to scale through, even in the ministry. Even if there's no money, God Himself will make sure that His grace is sufficient for you. Don't go and divert because restitution awaits for you. And you say also that you remember, also read 1 Corinthians 10, 32, the same thing. The same thing. And the Lord himself is here today to help you out. Praise. If you need to come and stand in the church, to clear yourself, do it. Some have done it, and today they have received the peace of God. The peace which passeth all understanding. The peace that God Himself will help you to attain. God, when you pray, believe that God is with you. Believe that God is in support of what you are doing and that the Lord is coming with you to confirm it. Go with the Lord. Go with the Lord. Don't be afraid. I remember one of our brother, whilst he was in Spain, he got his document from uh, the Spanish government and uh, <laughs> as usual, most of the people, they came with all kinds of stories. False stories, false name, everything is just false, complete falsehood. By the time he came to the movement and this message came, he understood that he would have to go back. And after much prayer and counsel, the brother went to the headquarter of immigration in Spain. When he arrived there, <laughs> He told them the story. As he's telling them the story, the people cannot understand. Sir, do you understand where this place we have come now? There is no door for you to go anywhere. If we finish with you, you know where we are going to take you about it. And I came. So whatever is going to happen, I'm ready. Ah, ah, they cannot understand it. This document we gave it to you. People are willing to die just to get the paper that he has. The people, the thing surprised them. So they called their big boss. When they called the big boss, the boss said, no, they should keep the man there until he came. He will come. He wants to see this man. He, he thinks his story that they are telling him. And they told the man, you relax, stay here. <laughs> he was ready. He relaxed. After many hours, the boss arrived. The boss arrived and said, who is this man that uh, you are telling me story? He said, he's here. He's this man, look, look at him. He said, okay, tell me the story again. And the brother told him the whole story. Kai, he was surprised. 
You mean there are people like this? Where did you say you come from? Holiness Revival Movement. <laughs> Praise Master Jesus. Where are these people? We are here. We are everywhere. Eh? Okay. They tried to threaten him, threaten him, threaten him. When they saw that he was rock solid, the man took his pen and wrote in his pen that this man is declared free. Praise the Lord. The, with his own pen. As Paul said, with my own handwriting, I write. He wrote it and he said, okay, he should go back with the same document and be using it. But until he goes and gets the right information in a new document, he should come back and they will transfer all the information to the new document. So when you are going, when you pray, believe. Because the confidence we have is that when we pray, our God does what? He hears us. Praise the Lord. They told our sister you cannot do it. You, your husband, your, how many children? I think about four children at the time, or five. You want to go and scatter everything, spoil everything. Satan and his people tried everything to make sure that she doesn't go. But she went, praise the Lord. And God himself, just the same story that I told you, when she got there, God took over and everything was done. And remember that you must be patient, and you must humble yourself. And you must apply wisdom. Remember Jacob. <laughs> the guy applied wisdom. He divided his uh, people into batches. First batch, go. Go. He knows that he's the one holding it. Yet he's calling him the senior. Oh, my brother, Augusta. God bless you. It is you. It's your, all these people here. They are your people. They are your children. These are the people here. God, he was humble. He was on the ground. And the man who was coming to deal with the man that took his birthright, God calmed him down. Praise the Lord. Don't go and start giving reasons. You are guilty. These few testimonies that we have shared, what God has done for those people, that God will also do it for you. So I want you to stand up if you have something like that. And then open your mouth and begin to pray. We will pray and commit you to God. God himself will give you the power, the anointing, the grace to go and do it. So if you have restitution you want to make, you can indicate yourself to the Lord. Raise your hand, stand up. And then open your mouth and begin to pray, God, I have heard your word. Your word has pricked my heart. I want to be holy. I want to live in peace to resolve the matter with you. Remember the book. Please buy it for someone. Give it as a gift. Save somebody. That's your pastor. Take it to him. That's your brother. Take it to him. Pray that this word, as the people of God, will accompany the word to do surgery in their heart and to grant them the grace to get it done. Are you the one? Are you the one? Open your mouth and pray. It doesn't matter who you are. You can be bishop. We have, you can be anybody. Anyone. But the condition is, do you want the peace of God? Do you want to go to heaven? And you know there is something there to do. In fact, the Bible says, if you come to church like this for worship, you brought offering, you brought something, you want to worship, and you remember, keep that with you. Go and resolve the matter before you continue your worship. You are serving. You are an evangelist. You are a pastor. Whatever. And you are going about doing your thing. And you have forgotten that you need to get this one done. Now is the time. Present yourself to the Lord, and the Lord will direct you and guide you to go and complete the work. The restitution. In Jesus' name, we pray. <laughs> Heavenly Father, your children are presenting. They want peace. They want to enter heaven. That which you have given this ministry, Father Lord, to present to them. They want to be not hear us alone, but do us of your word. Mighty God, I present them to you. I want to ask, O oh Lord, that you will have mercy upon them. 
Lord, have mercy upon them. Jesus, have mercy upon them. The word have said that if any will come to you, you will in no way send them out. Father, they have come, receive them. In Jesus' name, every voice of the... Lord, they will only hear your voice. They will receive from you. They will seek counsel. And they will follow you, O Lord, until they will get it done to the glory of your holy name. In Jesus' name. Those ones who has brought murmuring to the gospel, has brought murmuring to the ministry, oh, Father Lord, have mercy upon them. Yes, Lord, forgive them. Forgive them, oh, Lord. Forgive them, oh, Lord God. And help them, just as you helped Zacchaeus, to declare unto the people that they are willing to make things right, to do their restitution. Give them the courage. Lord, give them the courage. Lord, give them the courage. In Jesus' name. Those who are living, Father, married partners, but it's not right marriage. Yes, just like Abimelech, you showed mercy. God showed them mercy. Father, show them mercy. Many years in the kingdom of Abimelech, Lord God, you made sure that Abimelech did not touch the woman. Father, you can do great things. Even though the cost has been laid, Lord, you made sure that she, he did not go far to thwart your purpose in their life. Father, even those ones, help them, O oh Lord. Show them mercy. Let your grace be upon them. Help them, O oh Lord, to do it. We know that it might look difficult, but with you, all things are possible. Grant them the grace to go and complete it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father, and even as they go and do it, I pray that peace of God, which passeth all understanding, the peace that reigns in heaven will be bestowed upon their life. Father Lord, they will bring glory to your holy name wherever they are found. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Thank you, Jesus, for answering us. Take all the glory, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages, or inquiries, contact us on 0816-902-3948 or 0805-683-4323. You can also reach us through our email address, Holiness Revival Movement at gmail.com God bless you For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through Him might be saved Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. I believe in you. You are the living Savior.
I believe in you. 